Hello Africa, my name is Eunice Tony and this is ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. It is a show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. How have you been? It's WCW, I'm crushing on myself. Are you crushing on yourself or is there someone particular you are crushing on? Do not forget to tell the person how special uh, she is to you before midnight, okay? You don't have to miss out on WCW. Anyway, very responsible brands always ensure that I bring you African Women's Voices show every Wednesday. And we are broadcasting live on Facebook as well at ETV Ghana. Just in case for some reasons you need to leave your TV set and move on, we want to ensure that it continues. The show never stops. And my Facebook fans and Facebook family, I will always acknowledge you as usual, as I always do, okay, in due time. But hello, wherever it is you are. I would love to see a lot of you who usually will send me your waves, your comments. Please keep them coming once I begin to request for them. Chana Sheto is Ghana's number one pepper sauce. And if you've not tasted Chana Sheto, I need to let you know right now that the reviews are amazing. Those who have tried it keep testifying. And it depends on what kind of variants you want. We've got it very hot and spicy and have also gotten it mild as well. So whatever it is your preference is, there is a Chana Shita bottle that will work for you. And Liz's Tomato Mix is also ensuring that our jollof rice, our um, garden egg stews, our peanut butter soup, our stews, light soup, whatever delicacy it is that you want to use tomato paste for, definitely Liz's Tomato Mix will sort you out. If you also haven't tried it, I need you to do that as well. So once you go to your vendor, ask for Liz's tomato mix, okay? So once you cook your jollof rice, you take chana sheto, and then, you know, you merge it together and enjoy a good cooking. Ha! My hair, as usual, is put together by Awu's hair. You can locate her on Instagram and on Facebook. Her phone number is right now at the base of your screen, and she's ever ready to sort out your hair needs. You know, women, how we look sometimes when we, you know, after giving birth, we don't even have time to make our hair. Our wool will come and sort that out for you, okay? And sometimes, because we have wig caps now, we even forget to do the plaits that we do underneath the wig cap. Don't worry. Relax at home and call our wool. She'll come and sort that out also for you. And how are you seeing my beautiful blue and pink outfit? Remember, we are still in the month of October where we talk pink and also talk about breast cancer awareness. Yes, I'm loving this dress from Afariwa Styles. Afariwa made it for me, and you can easily locate her on Facebook and Instagram at afariwa.styles. If you also want to go to her physically, she's located at Osu, and also the head office is along the Teshinungwa Road at Container Bus Stop. If you know the Rasta Road, Container Bus Stop is where you should go, and you see the beautiful edifice of Afariwa Styles. And like I say all the time, it's a ready-made outfit that you can get there. So you just kiss goodbye to all those dressmakers who will always disappoint you and tell you your dress is not ready. Or even lie to you and forget to even pick your calls when you need your dresses. So just go to Afariwa. And she's into contemporary ladies and gents outfits. So walk in with your partner and walk out feeling really good. Her phone number is also at the base of your screen. If you want to start up a business, I want to suggest Afariwa Styles. Chana Sheto, Liz's Tomato Mix, or even a training from Awu's hair. Something good definitely will come out of it, and I would like to hear the story. All right, so moving over to the next segment of our show, we've got 60 seconds um, update segments where we tell you what's happening with women in Ghana and across Africa. When we return, I get to introduce our guest. I know a lot of you are itching to get to meet her. She's here already and she will be meeting you very soon, so do not go away. Leading Women Focused NGO 360 Woman Africa has continued with its mandate to empower women and bridge the scale gap for women in business and careers. The team held a two week training during which women between the ages of 22 to 55 were trained to reach their highest potential in their various areas of interest and also enjoy access to grants of up to 500,000 naira. In the last six years, the organization has consistently trained, coached, 
and mentored over 15,000 women. Last year, it launched the Women's Skill Development Center, which is the platform that manages all her women's development programs, which include the Enterprise Skill Development Program and the Leadership Skill Development Program. Through these centers, our goal is to build a viable community of highly skilled women, exemplary business leaders who will pay it forward within the various sectors they belong. Black Queens coach Mercy Tego Kwaku has named a squad list of 22 players to face Nigeria in the first leg of the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations qualifiers. The list includes four foreign-based players with Israel-based defender Blessing Shine making a return to the squad. Portia Boache and Spain-based duo Princella Edubia and Grace Asantua completes the list of foreign-based players invited for the hurdle. Ghana will take on the Super Falcons of Nigeria in two legs set for October 20th and 24th respectively, with the winner of the two matches progressing to the final round of qualifiers for Africa's flagship female competition. Gospel musician Cynthia Thompson has recounted how life has been since the governing New Patriotic Party adopted her song, Eradicasa, for their 2000 election campaign. During an interview on a reputable radio station in Ghana, the veteran artist said she was scared because people started associating her with politics. According to her, she resorted to lying about her identity to prevent people from easily making her out. Eradicasa single, which the singer released in early 2000, was a popular song widely accepted by the Christian community for its spiritual and electrifying lyrics, and also even made popular by the NPP presidential candidate. Johnny Jekunkufo, who made it his major campaign song ahead of Ghana's first general election in the 21st century. Welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Wow, we just finished with the 60 seconds update segment where we talked about the Black Queens. Well, unfortunately, they lost their first leg uh, today to Nigerians 2-0. Um, we are hoping that uh, when they return here in Ghana, Ghana gets to win so that we move on to the next hurdle. All right, so Black Queens, all oh, hope is not lost. Ghanaians, please, let's keep supporting the Black Queens. So we're getting into the business of the day, and I'm about to introduce our guest. Our guest is someone who a lot of us already know, and uh, we've seen how resilient she is because she finds herself in a space that is highly, highly male-dominated, and it's been so for a very long time. And uh, based on her resilience, she decided to be, uh, to be one of the people who will stand out and say, things cannot continue this way. We need a change in the system. I'm talking about somebody who, uh, a lot of times people talk about her beauty and her brains, so many beautiful things. I'm so happy to have her on my set today. She's no other person than Bridget Jobe Nuku, who is uh, the presidential candidate for PPP. Yeah, that's it there. And uh, she did really, really well and uh, looking really smashing on that <laughs> artwork. Bridget, please, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Yunus. Sure. Thanks for having me. Right. And uh, another thing about Bridget is that she's just not only into politics, she's into other things as well. And uh, I'm very happy and excited about it. It means that she's really able to balance her time. Women always struggle with this, but Bridget seems to have it all together and collected. Mm -hmm. So she'll be sharing with us today probably how she gets to juggle through all of that. One thing that stands out for me is the fact that this month, being the pink month and the breast Cancer Awareness Month, she is organizing a tennis tournament to raise awareness for this condition. You know, a lot of times people feel that, oh, we've heard so much about it. Believe you me, there are still some people who don't really know about it. And you know that when you want something to become part of a culture, you need to continue to repeat and repeat. And that's one thing she's doing through tennis. So she'll be telling us why she chose this particular sport to be the one that she's going to use to amplify the awareness around breast cancer. She's also a businesswoman, you see, great. And apart from that, she also mentors women and girls. She's got this group called Mentoring Women Ghana, and we'll be finding out from her the reason why she chose to do all of these things. 
And I will definitely ask her some political questions as usual. But just know that today's show is going to be an exciting one. And let your hair down, okay? It's not uptight. At some point, we'll allow you to make your phone calls and send in your comments. Encourage us women because it's not easy when we try to push and push and earn a seat at the table. Okay? All right. So over to you right now. Okay. Let's talk about your mentorship and your mm -hmm. mentoring activities and the reason why you decided to begin to mentor women. So tell us what brought about you thinking about even creating this group on its own. Okay. So it's not a permanent group, if you like. Okay. It's a program we run every year. And uh, we select young girls at tertiary level apply to be mentees in this mentoring program. Okay. And then we pair them with mentors. And the mentors are often women in my network. So they are women, people I have known. I mean, I'm not young. So I know a lot of people mm -hmm. who uh, have excelled, have matured, have experience in their field of work where these young ladies can learn from. So the young ladies apply, they uh, indicate on their form, it's an online form, their areas of interest, their areas of study, uh, their interests, their career interests. And then we try to find people who have s similarities or women who have already had experience in this interest of theirs. Mm -hmm. And then we pair them as their mentors. And then we encourage them to form a relationship and learn from each other. Each Indeed, other. the mentors also learn from the mentees. mentees. I tell them, a lot of us are not Instagram savvy. Mm -hmm. We're not social media <laughs> savvy. We don't know what Snapchat is and, and on and on. So you'll find that the mentors also pick up some of these uh, wow. tools from the mentees. mentees as well. Uh, we've had some very interesting success stories. So you asked me how I came to start to do this. Mm -hmm. I myself was a be beneficiary of a mentoring program okay. in 2008. In 2008, I was selected by the uh, US uh, State Department, so the embassy, uh, uh, the public affairs section, the educational section, to go on a mentoring program in the US. There were 40 of us from 40 different from different countries. There were two of us from Ghana, Juliet Asante and I. Oh, wow. And we went on this mentoring program. And I was mentored. I, I was working at Aviation Social Center at the time. So I think we saw an area where uh, it was different for a woman to be. And I was made to be mentored by the um, president of the WNBA, okay. uh, Women's National Basketball Association. So for about three and a half weeks, I was in the offices of the WNBA in, in uh, New York. And I was spending time with Donna Orenda, who I'm still in touch with. Aww. And uh, because of COVID, she's, she's doing a lot. She's, she has a, 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 an organization now called Generation W. And they have, they have regular programs uh, on, on online. And I join in sometimes. So uh, she was my mentor, and from there, and from the what I benefited from the program, I came home and started uh, mentoring women because I thought that it was useful and it helped. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it's a good guide, guide. It's good guidance for young girls, and we've got some really very recently one of our mentees from our very first program, uh, Fanny Ampong, was actually put us on social media celebrating how the pro what impact the program had had on her life. Her life. So that's wow. how we got into mentoring wow, women in Ghana. so beautiful. Mm. So are there certain areas of uh, mentorship that you look at? Um, or is it like multifaceted? Any form of mentorship it's guidance any will be any form, it's right? Any form, but career, emotional, mainly. Um, but it doesn't matter where you fall. We will find we, f we will find you a mentor. Oh okay. And we found them. And sometimes we don't have a perfect match, but we have a match where there are other similarities or there are other curiosities where you can pick up from your mentor. So okay. we've had very interesting. Uh, uh, I think we we have a mentor called Ohui Agbenyega, and she's one of the first who's been with us since two thousand nine. And she's a publisher. 
and uh, a function and advertising. And we gave her a mentee who said she didn't like to read. Whoa. So I think she, she really challenge. got her into <laughs> the reading thing very quickly. So sometimes it's not a perfect match, but it's still very uh, beneficial. Okay, talking about confidence, because I realize that a lot of times what also affects women mm -hmm. has to do with beyond academics. A lot of them are educated now, they're empowered, but the confidence to be able to voice and say, this is where I feel I belong, I can do stuff. I think that we're having a challenge with confidence. Are the mentors seeing this problem? I am thinking so, but from the feedback they give to you, do they see it as well, that we have this challenge of our women not really having self-confidence? Yes. Uh, look, everybody has a problem of self-confidence to <laughs> some extent. So yes, I'm sure the mentors see it too. We see it. We see it from the forms. And I used to say to the men mentors that with time, we've over the years, we've realized that the standards are falling. And uh, I think it was one of the mentees who said, oh, what? What, have we we, what haven't we done compared to those who were before us? So yes, there is that. But I say to people that most people are not confident because they place themselves very high, okay. high beyond what they are. And if you come to terms with where you are, if you ask yourself really, where am I right now? And you're truthful to yourself, then you, must you, you have to be uh, comfortable where you are. When you you you, sh you you place yourself too high or you shoot too high, then you feel inadequate not being able to be uh, at the level that you've placed yourself. Mm -hmm. That is where confidence becomes a challenge. So you must really come to terms and be truthful to yourself that this is my level right now and be comfortable in that place, knowing that you are growing and eventually you'll go to that place that you want to be. But if you're going to pretend, I always, I, there's something I say to the mentees when they come in. I say, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. You can't be somebody else. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to be is yourself. And if you're yourself, then confidence shouldn't be a problem. Problem. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about what you're doing with tennis around breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. Because... We want those who are watching us to understand the fact that we are still in the month and we still want to continue to champion the awareness around breast cancer. This tennis tournament, when did it start? So, um, in 2019, October, I, uh, with Mentoring Women Ghana. Mentoring Women, we also want to, uh, we also mentor through sports. Okay. So we used to have a basketball uh, club for girls where we go and play basketball, but we read and we talk about life issues and, you know, uh, um, health and hygiene and things like mm -hmm. that. We run it for a while out of a aviation social center. So I believe that through sports, women can be mentored as well. Okay. And therefore, mentoring women, we've we thought it's wise to start the Breast Cancer Awareness Tennis Tournament in 2019. Uh, it was a fun uh, two days uh, tournament sponsored by Hollard and uh, a few other uh, companies. And um, we played for two days. I think it was Tina, uh, I can't remember her mm -hmm. last name, but she won the tournament at the time. Oh there wow. was a doubles team as well. And uh, it went well. So w we, f we wanted to make it an annual thing. So from 2019, of course, 2020, we all know what kind of year it was. It wasn't really uh, a good one. Yes, <laughs> uh, uh, COVID came, and therefore we didn't do anything in 2020. I think that things are easing up right now, mm -hmm. and life must go on. So we decided to hold it again in uh, 2021. Uh, it's a an all-women's tournament. Mm -hmm. The Another reason why I thought to do it by all means this year is that a lot of young women are getting uh, interested in tennis, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, tennis by itself is a very graceful, beautiful sport. And women's tennis is growing. For a long time, it was a lot of the men who played tennis. And um, uh, women's tennis was not being given a lot of attention, like a lot of the sports yeah. in Ghana. I was happy to hear about uh, black queens, whether they won or lost. It's women's sports, and women are playing sports. 
and attention should be drawn to it. Right. I myself, have I play tennis. I actually came from the tennis courts. Yeah. yeah, from the visuals on the screen, yes. I actually saw you in your kit, and, and you're looking I've really good. I've been a sportswoman all my life, mm. and you, you were talking about confidence. Sports build confidence. Sports build that builds that spirit that says, I can also do it. Do it. I can compete. I can win. I am strong. I am healthy. So it's with that, with all these women coming into tennis, that we thought it's, uh, we should hold uh, this tournament again. Competition, sports, fun, laughter. But then whilst doing that, we are being made aware of breast cancer and uh, its uh, effects and the fight against it. Okay, mm. amazing. So people will be going for a quick commercial break. When we return, I know that that question on your heart that you want me to ask her, I will definitely ask her, okay? All right, so do not go away. And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. So now we're delving into politics. She's a politician. We've talked about what she's doing around uh, breast cancer awareness and how she's mentoring women. Well, beautiful. So let's go to that part that is highly dominated by the men and how she is resiliently going through it. So the question I know that it's on your heart and on my heart as well is um, something around social desirability. Could we talk about the effect or the influence of this particular social desirability when it comes to women leaders. How they desire us, how they want us to be whenever we decide that we want to take up positions such as the one you've taken. I mean, you used to be um, um, there for the vice presidential, for as a vice president, and that was in 2016. And this time around, you moved from vice president, you now wanted to become president. So it means that whatever it is you saw did not deter you from wanting to even go further. A lot of times people say, yeah, number two is fine for women. That's where you belong. But this is a woman who decided to move away from number two and go to number one. So let's talk social desirability, the effects and the influence it's got on female leaders. <laughs> it's funny, we were talking about this yesterday at some mm. other event I was at, uh, where there were other women politicians. And we said that... Um, we are s we still have a lot of work to do mm. to be wanted as women in leadership, to be recognized as uh, people who can also lead. And um, we women have to work at that. We can't sit back and expect that uh, they'll just say, oh, come, you mm -hmm. we got. I mean, most times when you're called to come, as a woman, it's for that token to see that okay, we've allowed a woman in, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But we need a lot more women. I think in Parliament we have about fourteen percent representation as women. We can do a lot more. There's a lot of women who are capable leaders and can lead from the local level all the way to the top. Um, I believe that. We are the ones, look, we are, we are a larger number than, than the men. And if a mass of us women are not pushing other women, mm -hmm. the men are not going to do it for us. Uh, or or they're, they're not even enough, for as many as us. So we, the women, must also be seen to be encouraging other women to fill up those leadership positions. positions. You know, the reason why I ask this about mm -hmm. social disability is the fact that we've got a lot of forces that are not very friendly to women. I mean, when it comes to our social norms, especially when it comes to our faith, you know, it, it pulls women back. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when people see any woman who wants to move further and to show that I can be number one, it begins to look like, oh, I mean, she's just too much. Don't you mean I'm supposed to be number two? Why would you want yeah. to take this position? They see you as somebody you know, who's recalcitrant. You know, what happens is that a lot of people, uh, you and I, uh, women in general, we, if I can't do it, why should you be able to do it? Mm -hmm. We have that, right? Yeah. I can't do it, so I, can't b I don't believe that she can do it. And therefore, um, then if you dare, then you, or she, mm -hmm. who, who does she think she is? But if, you you let them understand that I'm like you. 
I'm just daring. I said to people, people said, aren't you afraid? I said, of course I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. But I walk into my fear and, and let's see what, what becomes of it. Most times what we're afraid of doesn't materialize. It yeah. doesn't. And you know, uh, people are afraid. Yeah, they will insult you. People insult you. They try to bring you down, break your spirit. Yeah, I was coming but to that because we have a lot of that in Ghanaian politics. Because they themselves are, f are way down there feeling low. So nobody they want to get you into the happy, place where they are. Nobody who is happy wants to pull other people down, down. with them. They are not down. If somebody isn't down, they don't want to pull you down. So mm. it is people who are not happy within themselves. And if you are able to understand that, then you actually have compassion on them. And you understand them and you say, you know what? I know where you are coming from and the reason why you are being so nasty or catty. And you actually feel sorry for them. Mm. And, you, you, and therefore, you want to pull them along and say, you know what? Come out of that dump that you are you're in. So, yes, and unfortunately, I think our situation in Ghana, a lot of people are, are, are suffering. They are, they are in difficult places. Business isn't right. Uh, their relationships are not going right. And when they put all that together and look at you, you must be happy. Mm -hmm. You must be, you know. So you have got to go out and reach out to them to let them know that, oh, no, I'm actually one of you. I'm just trying to push through my fears and my frustrations. You know, I find that a lot of people say, I, when you listen to radio in the morning, oh, this is that, I think something must be done about it. Mm. Who? who should do that something? Who, who should do that something? That who must do it? And I've had people who come to me and say, oh, what are you and your party doing? And I say, what do you want my party and I to do? And what is the role you have to play in that? Sometimes the role you have to play, the only role you have to play in it, is to vote mm. and vote for us. But if you sit there and say, what are you and your party doing? And sometimes maybe you're asking me what, I'm, what am I doing, what my, my party and I are doing. You have a TV studio, bring me in and let me talk to people. Mm -hmm. If you really want my party and I to do something, so we can't sit back and be catty and be nasty and not do anything about it and expect something to change. You have got to put yourself in this and say, what will should, what must I do? What can I do? And for the women especially, yes, we are all afraid. We are all scared. We all get insulted. But you must put yourself out there and say, this is what I can contribute to that change. Mm. Something must be done about it. It won't be done and it won't change by itself unless you know what you want to change. So put your efforts to it and let it change. Wow, and that's what I amazing. Did. Okay, so for someone who has already gone through it, not just once, but at least twice, mm -hmm. I was going to ask this question around for a woman who is interested in a political position mm -hmm. and has this fear of, God, they're going to begin to dig dirt mm -hmm. about me, my past, they will disturb my children, mm -hmm. if the person is married, they will disturb the spouse. How do you take care of this? What advice would you give? Are they supposed to like put their families in the background and just be the ones in front so that people don't really get to, you know, dig in into them? What should somebody you who know, is I having I this kind I of fears tell everybody do? Everybody, there is no perfect person. Mm -hmm. Nobody is clean. Nobody is perfect, and and has no no uh, 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 no skeleton in her cupboard. You are human, so they're going to dig. I think when we started, I said, be yourself. Mm -hmm. So people know me, people know who I am on the surface, and uh, you know, you, sh you, ought to you, can, you, sh you can afford to be an open book. And therefore, when they dig, what debt? Everybody has debt, you know. And like I said, don't let your fears uh, uh, stop you. I think when I was uh, uh, nominated as presidential candidate, I was afraid, yeah, what will people say? Mm -hmm. But I also realized that twice as many people were more encouraging 
than those who were trying to Pull denigrate me, me. Yeah. and therefore do not only look at what will people say which is wrong there's also things people will say which is right, right. and most times what people will say which is right is a lot more than those who say what is something that is wrong wow well that's a very wonderful way to deal with it everyone has got dirt mm -hmm. so even if they take the dirt still concentrate on the good things that people are saying about you and don't let that dirt you know pull you down you keep moving so bringing us to the question that a lot of you know people always ask whenever they tell them okay she's been nominated to be the vice presidential candidate or maybe the presidential candidate as the case may be the question they always ask is but can a woman win you know so now we would like you to address that when let's talk to the people themselves mm -hmm. who um are the ones to vote because mm -hmm. a lot of times that's what they keep pondering over in their mind so they're like i don't want to uh, waste my votes i think the best thing to do is just to find a guy in the space and vote for the guy because i'm not sure a woman can win can a woman win oh no a woman cannot win we think that it's the wrong question to ask it so we indeed. need you to help us address do that. you want a woman to win i want a woman to win yes so what do you do go and vote for the woman it's what you want and you see I think that a lot of people seem to think, and I even when I'm campaigning, I have this conversation with some of the, the uh, electorate, uh, some of the people I deal with. We have this idea that it's a competition where I must be with the winners. Mm. Not I must make the winner, but I must be with the winners. Make with the winners. You must make the winner. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you want to vote to make the winner, then if you want to make the woman to be the winner, then make her the winner by voting for her. But when you say, oh, she won't win, what are you, what are you voting for? Do you want to vote to be with those who won, and then what? And then you can say, okay, we won, and then what? Or do you want to make a change do you want to put your vote where you believe that that change that I want in my life is going to be made by my vote and all the other people who want that change in their life? Mm -hmm. We need to change the thinking, and maybe this is an NCCE thing, but we need people need to change the thinking from uh, our governance and our democracy just being about winning or being with the winner to more of a change in my my life a change in my lifestyle a change in the way i want things done and, and i'll keep voting for it until the change happens yes you know and if you are saying are we ready for a woman are you i ask people are you ready for a woman do you want a woman president because it's not whether Ghanaian, you are one of us. Whoever is asking are we on, you are one of us. What do you want? And if you want it really, go and change it. Mm. Great. So I like the fact that you mentioned that it could be, we should look at it maybe from the NCCE um, perspective because we need to change the narrative, especially now that it's officially known that we've got more women in Ghana than men. Mm -hmm. So as time goes on, the empowered women will have mm -hmm. to take up positions that are going to be available. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's just how it is. Because as time goes on, we need to take up these roles. So if we need to change the narrative, we need to look at certain you know, aspects of our lives. So let's look at social media, for instance, how women are being projected on social media. Even quite recently, an African lady, a Nigerian a musician, uh, just from nowhere, some tape has been released about her. She's been doing so well. And this tape is kind of trying to put her in the negative light. And that seems to be something that a lot of times people do to show that women are not capable. They show maybe videos on social media where some women are, are throwing tantrums. So it's like if a woman becomes really prominent or a leader, we find that, oh, she's going to be all over the place with her emotions. So what kind of things should we be sharing on social media, for instance? to ensure that the narrative is beginning to be modified and to be changed so that women can be seen as just like the way the men are being seen? You know, I, 
I'm not. I, I used to. I'm on short social media. I'm on Facebook. Uh -huh. I have a personal Facebook page. Every so often, I have some thoughts that I express on Facebook. Every so often, I share pictures and all that. Um, people who want to bring you down will pick on the negatives. Uh -huh. And we all, like I said, we all have, you know, debt. And we, we all react in ways that sometimes we, we might have been overboard. But to pick on this, I mean, men throw t tantrums too. So why do you pick on a woman's tantrums and put it on Facebook to say, to, to, to berate her, to say she's not capable just because of a tantrum? That's not true. And um, I think as many of those that are posted, maybe we also should make an attempt to project women in, 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 good in a good light mm -hmm. or project ourselves. So while somebody is showing me, throwing a tantrum, maybe somebody should also show me or I should show myself being loving and compassionate and kind to someone else. And mm -hmm. then that counters it, right? Yeah. So everybody has moments and everybody has days that they are not... Uh, in a good mood, and uh, other days that they, 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 they are. And frankly, um, you know, our ability as women to express our emotion is a strength. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of men, they repress. Men yell too, and they scream, and they shout, and they but it seems as if, uh, oh, it's okay for men to be that way, but it's but not, not okay woman. for a woman to be that way. If it's all right, if that is you, and it is indeed justified that you are expressing your emotion against something, you express your emotion and you let it go, and you get on with life. You get on to the next thing. It's fine. It's a strength to be able to express your emotion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, bottling it up kills you. It, it does all kinds of things to you. Yeah, that is so so it's, true. It's, it's also a strength. And I think that as much as if the more people put on social media those parts of a woman where she's expressing her emotion and maybe it's unhealthy, she should also have healthy parts of her showing kindness, showing compassion, interacting with people, and that should be running alongside. Great. So in other words, what you're saying is that we men, we need to also tell our story right. Yes. A lot of times people tell the story wrong mm -hmm. and we only say, hmm, they're and not being cower. fair to us and we do nothing yeah. about it. So yeah. let us share the right side of our story mm -hmm. to counter mm -hmm. whatever the negative aspect that people always bring up yeah. for us. Yeah. I will also look at this aspect of maybe the youth, using the youth to change the narrative. Uh, I see. I say this because a lot of times the youth are the one who always want to say we want to change, we want to this, we want that. They always hold the leadership accountable. Mm -hmm. The youth. So I'm sure that if we are also able to engage youth better, like you mentioned, the NCC, for instance, even the civil society, if they get to engage youth better, then they can also help to champion the cause that yes, even as we are asking for accountability from our leaders, we also want to see women also taking up positions. So women should not just stand somewhere and you know watch other people fight for them. We need to tell our story right, and we also need to you know get civil society to also help us to talk about the challenges that we are facing. I agree with you. You see, um, I was at the Executive Women's Network. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, it was quite interesting. Yes, and I was saying to them that look at this force in this room. Why aren't we influencing governance? Why aren't we influencing policy? Why well, we don't want to, we think politics is dirty. We don't want to get our hands dirty mm -hmm. getting into politics. But politics is our life, our health, our security, our education. Uh, at least, th th these are top three for women here. Mm -hmm. You know, and we must bring the conversation in and take hold of it and influence it and say no. We want a change in this way or a change that, way. that way. And we must influence the conversation. A lot of us women are working hard. We are in the markets. We are heading institutions. We are in executive positions. And our children are going to school. And we may think that, oh, you know, I have a life where I can afford the private. And I don't care what's going on around the uh, rest of Ghana. But your children are going to go in a Ghana where 
these children who went into the public schools and are going to live with them. And you must be willing to have a say in that, who is going to be your children's neighbor. Mm -hmm. and who so you don't carve yourself out of it and say, we're not going to talk about it. I think most times people are afraid. Because we have this duopoly, people are afraid. Hey, if I go and speak, then they'll say I'm on the other side. Mm -hmm. And if I don't know if you remember, I said, let them say, you know the truth. Yeah. You know the truth you are working with. So women, we must influence our governance. We must influence our politics, even if you don't want to be a politician. But as much as possible, even at the local level, enter the, the assemblies and the district uh, uh, municipal assemblies and all that. Enter there and see what you can contribute, even if it's a suggestion. I, I there's a radio program I listen to every morning, and they are suggesting that, oh, you know, the assemblies, uh, they meet on such Sundays. Mm -hmm. Go and join in the meeting. Go and join in the meetings. I have some very brilliant uh, um, uh, suggestions for them as to how to make the communities clean and, and uh, tidy and, and uh, um, livable. And I'm going to go and sit in some of those meetings and talk. It doesn't mean I'm campaigning. It doesn't mean I want to be district chief executive. It just means that I want a certain life for myself in the community in which I find myself. And I can influence uh, policy at that level. Mm. And I think that is what we all women should start looking at and looking to do, to influence our community in, in one way or other. And okay. if you find that you think you're capable of leading a certain group of people, go for that too. And don't care about what people will say. They will always say. Okay. So we'll be going for uh, our final commercial break, but I have this information here from HD to you. It says, with HD, you now have control over where, when, and how you watch your favorite TV shows. Pause and rewind to replay live TV as well as record upcoming shows. Please note that the record and the playback features are enabled when a USB flash drive with storage size of 4 gigabytes and above is connected to the USB slot at the back of your HD decoder. Additionally, you can now watch TV on the go by linking your active HD account to the My HD Plus app on either your phone or tablet with no data charges every month. Yes. Free data via My HD Plus app so you don't miss any of your favorite shows whilst away from home. Oh, that is so amazing. So you need to get an HD decoder with two months free subscription at only 99.99 .99 Ghana cities. Download My HD Plus app from the Google Play Store for Android users and from the App Store for iPhone users right now. Let me say it again. I need you to download my HD Plus app from the Google Play Store for Android users and from App Store for iPhone users now. Call 024-243-9872. 024-243-9872 for more info now. HD Plus, the feely, feely experience. Oh. And I also have another information I'm going to share with you, but when we come out, do that. I would like us to know that I can open the phone lines when we return. So you share your comments with us, okay? Whatever it is that you want to say to women to encourage us to do more, you know, to aspire to do great things. We want to hear you say them to us. All right, so let's go for this break. When we return, the show continues. Welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices Show. The phone lines are open. However, I've got a lot of comments and waves here. So I'm wondering if you're still going to be able to do that. But I mean, if you get through, then you're very lucky. Because usually at this time, it gets really tight on our phone lines. I'm seeing Raj, Raj, Raj. He says, nice. I see Amos in Kansas. He says, Her Excellency, we are proud of you. I see Kweku Ike. He says, beautiful, Mrs. T. Do you know Amos in Kansas? Okay, nice. And then I'm seeing um, Amadi Iwoha. You are actually watching us from Nigeria. You said, Ghanaian ladies are really beautiful and they've got so much brains. I'm enjoying the lady so much. Wow, that's good. So follow her on social media. You get to know much more about it. 
Now let me talk to all those of you who have been sending me waves and highs. I see them all. I'm seeing a lot of waves and highs from Tokyo, from, um, from um, Kinshasa, from Congo, Brazzaville. I see uh, a wave from Casablanca. Yeah. I see from the UAE, from the UK, from the United States of America. They are all sending their waves. Well, thank you so much. I see from Ouagadougou. I see from Lome. I see from Ivory Coast. I see from various parts of Nigeria, Enugu, Nsoka, uh, Lokoja, I see uh, where Abuja, I see Lagos, I see uh, Cross River State, I see um, River State in Port Harcourt. Okay, fine. Thank you all so much for sending in your waves. And coming down to Ghana, I'm seeing so much waves. And I'm seeing a wave from Accra. Yeah, thank you so much. From Kumasi, from Sunyani, from Tamale. I'm seeing waves from the Central Region, from Axim, from Haufasini. Thank you so much. From Salt Pond. Ah, Volta, 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 Volta. Whoa! <laughs> My in laws are actually sending waves. Yeah, you know, I'm very proud to be associated with the uh, Volta region. Yeah. And today we also have one of us here too. So I'm seeing a lot of people sending in their waves from Volta region. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm seeing more comments. Wow, this lady, I've never he heard her talk before. This is my first time. Thank you so much for bringing her on your show. Her name is Marian. Marian, thank you uh, for your comments. Don't worry, she's going to come a lot more. You'll be coming a lot more, right? <laughs> All right, another person says, oh, I'm very happy you're giving women the platform to be able to really say what's inside of them. A lot of times, they are not given the opportunity. Thank you so much, Madam Presidential Candidate 2020 for PPP. Whoa. I also hear that we've gotten a caller. Hello, caller. What's your name? And where are you calling us from? My name is Desmond calling from Edith. Your name is Desmond, and you're calling from? Ma oh, the line. My name is Ajezo. Uh, okay, Ajeno, and you're calling from? Yeah. Okay, please, where are you calling us from? I don't want to miss this. Oh, we lost the caller. Oh, 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 okay. So, I mean, the comments are just tripping in. Uh, but as it is, we'll just have to wrap up our conversation. The repeat broadcast will be brought to you on Saturday at 12 noon, okay? Then you can get yourself up, um, abreast with whatever it is we discuss. However, I don't want Bridget to leave here without saying something that stuck with me when we met at EWN conference, their fifth anniversary uh, last week. And it had to do with people having to, you know, get themselves a seat at the table. Do you remember what you said? Okay. Yes, please tell, tell that to our audience. Let me use that to wrap up. So, <laughs> well, I'm looking on the camera, so you, you, <laughs> you get it from me. Uh, we were talking about having a seat at the table, and I quoted a lady, a woman, who, an African-American woman who was in the U.S. Congress in 1968. Now, that is rare for an, an African-American woman to be in the U.S. Congress in 1968 and run for President of the United States in 1972. Her name is Shirley Chisholm. And uh, Shirley said that if they don't give you a seat at the table, mm -hmm. bring your own folding chair. <laughs> and I added to it to say that by the time you bring your own folding chair and they're about to throw you out, they would have asked you, why have you come? And you'll have a chance to say what you have to say. Exactly. And I said the same thing, that one thing that stops us from being so aggressive or putting ourselves there, we are afraid. What will people say? But you know, in Ghana, we have a trotto driving the streets of Accra with an inscription on it that says, let them say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let them say, let them say. So I've got this comment that has been coming in. It says, well, you said you were going to give her the opportunity to keep coming on your set. So we want her to come on the morning show. <laughs> okay. All right. So they say they want you to come on the morning show of ETV Ghana. It depends Ghana. on what time <laughs> of the morning. I'm not a very good morning person. Morning person. <laughs> All right. So do you know what? We'll have that discussion with her afterwards, okay? And uh, who knows? It may happen. But if you don't see her on it, you definitely will see her on other shows of ours, all right? But we look forward to making your, I mean, your dream happen. 
to see her on the morning show. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned earlier, the repeat broadcast is going to be coming to you uh, at 12 noon on Saturday. And also you can watch it on YouTube. It will be uploaded there tomorrow. And also on Facebook, you can watch it as well. So we've made it possible for you to have access to the content we always provide you with. So uh, until we meet again, same time next week, we would like you to enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup for you. Bye-bye.